Recording. Hey. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? <sighs> so Katharina and I were just having a conversation about about bringing your desires into the now. Because... Yeah, this is something that Shanti Zimmerman actually really taught me um, back when I was doing her hibernation retreat. I don't know if you remember that period of time last year. Uh, I remember that you kind of coming like... Coming from Austin to Hawaii. Okay. That period of time. I was really like learning how to feel into my desires and, and to experience the feeling states now. And, you know, I was just thinking about how uh, last Monday we actually were doing that because um, we had just had like this amazing week. We had just started making these videos about money, power, sex. <laughs> we had just been like walking around Maui and just like loving life just really, really, really soaking up all this time that we are spending together while Paul's in between work. Uh, he had, he has this per period of vacation time that we've just yeah, been just like great. dancing and, and having fun through. And Imagine you don't have to work for like two weeks when you live in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> That's so great. we were just it's like amazing. Hawaii two so week we were vacationing. Just vacationing, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. So the time that we were spending, um, it just culminated on Monday and we were just there on the beach mm. frolicking in the waves and yeah, dancing, dancing, and like singing. singing. We were just having a riot. It was we so were. Fun. The, the man was there with his, his harp, whatever, on the beach. Yeah, we, we passed like, the man playing his harp. Every moment was just like this magical experience, one after the other, one after the other, one after the mm -hmm. other. And like... All of that energy culminated with Paul like pulling me up to the sand dunes oh, yeah. and just like taking me by the hand up into these like little secluded area <laughs> behind the sand dune and into the forest area. Yeah. And he took me there and you know, he knows that part of my desire is to, um, this is, that's distracting. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to recenter it. No, it's fine. All right. Uh, so he was taking me up to the sand dune area, and I just... Do you want to finish that story? Oh, yeah. So you can probably guess what happens up in the sand dune area that's secluded and that nobody's going by. What was going through your mind at the time? Well, so I knew that Katharina had a fantasy about sex on the beach. Yeah, because she's something that, like... Every young girl, like we hear the margarita yeah. drink or whatever, like sex on the beach. And then it just flashes through your mind is like this desire that like someday would be really cool to have, right? Yeah. Sex on the beach, ah, you know. <laughs> and then people make jokes like, oh, you're going to get sand in your vagina or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't care. I wanted to have that experience for myself. If, I've, if that happened, then mm -hmm. so be it. Yeah. And so I just saw that there was an opportunity and I'm like, oh man, I'm going to make her dream come true today. <laughs> <laughs> and it did yeah that but, was amazing yeah but it wasn't even so much about the sex it was really about just just bringing that experience into our into our right now because that's the type of ecstasy that we like to live in all the time just the joy of having desire after desire met and fulfilled like a little kid you know just right. excited about life yeah it's like because of the perspective that we have about our desires it's we're like a kid in a candy store with like mom's credit card <laughs> and we're just buying everything because and it's that's amazing just, that's how it feels to delight in to, in your now moments and mm -hmm. delight in in the pleasure of the experience of like, the experience itself yeah. uh, katharina tomorrow on date day we're gonna go visit a castle they're having an open house at a castle yeah and the castle's for sale. And so we get to look at the castle we get and to like look at evaluate it. it and be like, hmm, do I yeah. want to live in something like that? I it, don't know. Because for the past couple of years, you and I have like been doing house sifting. We have. And this home that we're in currently is a, is a huge sifting exercise for us. And we, we, we discovered that we actually enjoy our smaller, cozy home. Yeah, it feels kind of like a little cabin. Yeah, we were looking at one that was 5,000 square feet. And... Um, it was just cavernous. It was just cavernous. Mm -hmm. And so, but we, we never would have known that we didn't want to live in a 5,000 square foot home until we, unless we actually considered it. Right. And, and both, and of, both us, of us have had the, like, the fleeting desire, not like, fleeting, but 
pretty consistent desire pretty consistent to desire. Want to, like, live in a castle. Right. And so we need to figure out, like, well, what is Does it about living in a castle exciting? that we want? Yeah. And so go visit castle and figure it out. Also, I think it's rad that we live on an island where castles come up on the real estate market. Okay? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just think that's rad. <laughs> I love it, too. I think yeah. it's hilarious. Yeah. We saw the posting, like, I'm having an open house at my castle. <laughs> like, awesome. We're going to go gawk at your castle for a little while and, and see and what we like about it. it. And enjoy it. And lo love what you've done with it and get ideas because we're going to end up building our own home. And when we do, we want to know how to build it. Or what we, we want in What it. we really want in it. Do we actually want a castle or do we just enjoy the peace and solitude that comes when you can just like close the door and fill the moat with alligators and you're like, stay away from me, cold, cruel world. Go away. <laughs> That's not really how I feel. It's more like a fairy tale castle to me of mm -hmm. just being able to be like up in a tower and just like be in the clouds basically. Right. And to be kind of have your solitude and your privacy. Mm -hmm. Which we both really value. Yes, I am a total introvert and so is he. Mm -hmm. We were hanging out today with a cat in between us and both of us on our laptops not talking to each other. It was divine. It was so great. I love that like our together moments where we're actually talking are like so satisfying, but then also when we're together but separate, mm -hmm. it's also satisfying too. Yeah, both ways are a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Love having you around. Thank you. I love being around. I love having you around too. I'm so grateful that we got married. Yeah. I mean, for real. Totally. Yeah. Oh, something else that's really fun that we're doing is, uh, so we're going to buy a bunch of pillows and really spruce up this place. One of the things that we did when we decided that we wanted to live in a better house is that we decided that we would put a lot of attention into this house. And to whatever current house we're living in. Right. We, we've done that every place. Every we've place lived we've ever lived. We've always left how it better. Each, each one keeps getting better too and each one keeps getting better and so i i know that a lot of people are, are discontent with the home that they live in so flip it on its head and be super grateful for it and and, and make that actionable by and look for ways to look for, improve it look for ways and, to improve and it and to love it yeah that's how i think about it every single place i've lived i i put my love into the home because i want the home to love me back and i want it to support me back mm -hmm. so you that means like I'm a ruthless declutterer. I both of us are ruthless about it. We're constantly getting rid of stuff we don't need. I mean, I'm a I'm a minimalist, mm -hmm. but I also want to fill the space with things that feel sensual to me, things that feel um, supportive and nurturing to me as well. So, um, you know, that has been the crux of my love of interior design over the years. It's not just because I like pretty spaces, like because I like spaces that. Are supportive and mm -hmm. um, just really energetically peaceful and, and supportive to me. Like this home out here, this we live in a little, basically an artist cottage. It's, it's like a two story. It's like a two, two story. Bedroom. Yeah, two story. I, I wouldn't even call it a cottage. It's it's, it's like a small a, home. Yeah, it's, it's a, a sm small. Home. It's a small home, and, and and it's so cozy with us. Yeah, we really like the size of it. Yeah, we've we've lived in small spaces together for a while. Like we shared a one bedroom apartment in Kyle, Texas. We did. A while. And, you know, we put the bed in the living room and, like, turned it into, like, this, like, hotel room suite. Oh, man, suite. it was great. And so we had, like, this four-poster canopy bed thingy. In that the living was, room like, with a vaulted ceiling. Room. With a vaulted ceiling. And then we had, like, our armchairs and, like, couch <laughs> couches that were all, like, cool uh, in the living room there. So it was, like, a sitting room with bed and everything and then he had his office in the other bedroom mm -hmm. yeah i liked that it was a, it was a different way to use uh what is like generally considered a really boring apartment yeah we just used it different and we turned it from like we, boring we one used bedroom. our imagination and we, our creativity we used our imagination and creativity and this is really this is something we do all the time like we are consistently imagining what we want and then just watching it show up yeah. We, just, we wanted Hawaii, so then, like, everything so came together. So we imagined together. that. So we imagined So we it. started making, like, backgrounds for our computers mm -hmm. and, like, little sticky notes just talking about Hawaii. Yeah. Listening to tropical house music. So when I was driving, I was imagining what it was like, like to feel Hawaii and the sun on my skin. And, you know, yeah. like, I used a lot of really active visualization with that. 
And something that yeah, happened um, when we started doing that, we started seeing Hawaii everywhere. We saw yeah, Hawaii we started stickers. Hawaii this synchronicities is synchronicities and license plates. License stuff. plates, yeah. And it's just really interesting to see how fast that that stuff showed up to just sort of like, we, we view it as just little road markers. I call them God winks. God winks, yeah. God mm -hmm. is just being like, hey. He's hey, playing with you. He's, he's just like having some fun. <laughs> Kind of showing you, hey, that's what's to come. And the same thing with Maui. When, we, when the two of us truly decided that we were going to move we to Maui. We started seeing Maui stuff we saw everywhere. Maui stuff everywhere. Yeah, as if it was like like the, the things popping up, the synchronicities just illuminating the path. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we've been noticing as we've been playing with manifestation. Because uh, that's really what Paul and I hang out and do. And we're, yeah, we, basically. We use prayer and we intention prayer and manifestation a lot. A lot. And so when we have, ever since we got together, I mean, our friends Ray and Michelle Martin in Costa Rica gave us this book um, by Abraham Hicks that really started like illuminating his mind to the fact that, you know, your, your thoughts and your intentions and your prayers actually do bring things back to you. So use it. It's, it's not something to just like let it wither away and be a pacifist about, you know, you can actively use this in your life for your benefit and for the benefit of all. Mm -hmm. So that book was the power, the power, the amazing the power of deliberate, deliberate intent. intent. Yes. Yes. The amazing power of deliberate intent. And it's a super duper. Thank you to Ray and Michelle Martin for giving us that book. We still have it on our bookshelf. And, yeah. And you signed it even, which makes yeah. me feel so special. Like, right. But they called their farm. Think a good life. They did. And they, and they were they very intentional. One. Like they, those are people who are really living, mm -hmm. um, Intentionally. Intentionally. Like and they're so intentionally picking everything that happens to them instead of like just looking just at the world and existence. accepting whatever happens in the planet and be like, oh, that, well, that happened now. Well, this happened now. Like they're very intentional about picking mm -hmm. what they want. And it's and something so that. So are we. So are we. Yeah. We are very intentional. We, we pick where we want to live. We pick what we want to earn. We pick what we want our love to look like. Yeah. We well, choose it very yeah, intentionally. We choose it deliberately and with our intent. Mm -hmm. And you can too. Yeah, it's really amazing stuff, guys. And it's not just positive thinking, bullshit, woo-woo. Like, this is real stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other counterpart of that is looking at the belief systems that you have in your life that prevent you from feeling like that could be a reality for you. And so it's, it's a combination, you know, using the deliberate intent. And it's also a combination of clearing out the old patterns of thought that would mm -hmm. kind of stifle the uh, manifestation process. Yeah. One of the reasons that Katharina and I always have enough money for whatever we need is because money is a middleman. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of cut out the middleman. You just go straight to God. And go straight to God. It's so, so simple. And it's like... She's just talking about belief systems. And if you have a belief system that's blocking you from really getting the thing that you want because you secretly believe you don't have it or, or can't, so you have, can't it. have it. And it's you're never allowed to have it or you're never going to have it because you're not worthy, you're not deserving, you're not mm -hmm. good enough, blah 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 blah. Yeah. The you also have to go out and do some work. And and work means following your intuition when it says to go do something. Imagine that, so, so I don't believe that I work for an employer, even when I do work for an employer. I always believe that I work for God, not for an employer. I don't work for an employer, I don't work for money. Mm -hmm. And so consequently, my employer always loves me and I always have plenty of money. Because I just say, hey God, I want this thing. Hey God, I need this thing. Hey God, I really desire this thing. And then the work that I do is actually to be consistently asking God for the thing and constantly reminding myself. When, when I put a sticker on my, on my computer monitor that said Maui on it, I didn't do it to just remind myself that I need to earn money to go to Maui. I, no. I, I put it on there to remind myself to ask God to make my landing in Maui soft. And he did. And he did. Yeah. People think that if you want something, you have to just sort of write it in a journal a thousand times. Oh, no, 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 no. No, you have to integrate that something into your life. You have to live as if you are already experiencing that something. And that is what we're talking about by bringing the desires into, into your, your now, into, into your, your now. world. You know, so I had a feeling when we were in Austin that I really wanted to live in a house that was just like perfectly 
ticky boo everything was in its place like I had you know my canopy beds and I had everything like matching like um, I had a whole color scheme throughout the house and it felt like I was in a hotel suite because I have this desire for really opulent uh, surroundings and I always have ever since I was a kid you know that has been my jam of really liking yeah. mine um, too nice so stuff. we're glad that we agree yeah I mean I'm super spiritual and hippie and I don't shave my legs or my armpits but like <laughs> I like really luxurious surroundings my grandma you know was a lady and i grew up around um her her air of royalty and i have a count as a grandfather great-grandfather and you know i have kings and and all of that in my lineage so you know that has been really embedded into my conditioning of what i like and so the experience of creating that in the world has been really cool mm -hmm. to just see how I've embedded that in like every place we've gone of just like this everything's tied together everything's pulled together the mm -hmm. the interior design around us has that sense of of luxury to it it does and and in fact when we lived in Austin people thought that we earned a lot more money than we actually did at the time <laughs> <laughs> they don't they'd only have known. Skills, yeah. yeah, because of her interior design skills. She put together an entire apartment for less than $2,000 because we asked for it. We asked for every item specifically. Like, we wanted a four poster canopy bed, and so that's what we prayed for. We didn't just pray for a bed. Man, um, specificity is key. Specificity. And yeah, I knew exactly what kind of dining room table I wanted and God provided that for like 150 bucks or whatever. Right. A four piece beautiful, beautiful dining beautiful table. Beautiful iron like with glass tabletop and a lot of ornate like yeah. like everything for 150 bucks. Mm -hmm. I shit you not like like I God is my manifesting guru man like so I just ask him for what I'm looking for and it's like an intention yep. and then um, that's why I always do so well in thrift stores too. Like I love going to thrift stores because I have this game with God where I'm like, all right, God, this is what I need. And then we just go get it. Remember we prayed like you, Paul just recently needed a new computer bag. Yeah. And like, and we, I wanted we, one that we, wasn't we, black. Yeah. And we prayed before we went into the store and like we stood outside and we just prayed like, Hey God, this is what we're wanting. This is what we're looking for. And now he has like this, this plum computer bag that looks really cool. Yeah. And it's totally like in colors that work for him. So, mm -hmm. yeah, because I'm the I'm the sort of guy who color coordinates my laptop bag. Because really you do. like to be that level in te of be intentional. Because I like to be that level of intentional. There's nothing in my life that I have not considered. That's why I don't own a whole heck of a lot. It's very difficult to be a materialist when you've considered everything that you want in your life. Right. You you put deliberate thought into things and. Through mm -hmm. your deliberate thought, you have chosen things deliberately. And, and that's how you can also choose your moments. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can choose, do I want to experience elation in this moment? Do I want to experience ecstasy in this moment? Do I want to experience love in this moment? Mm -hmm. And if you do, choose it. And then you're, by your choice, you will line up with actions that yeah. create more of it. And if you find yourself experiencing an emotion that you didn't actually choose, there's a really easy way that, that I handle this. I just take a deep breath and I just let, whatever the emotion is, I just let it go. Because if I didn't think about it to begin with, why on earth is it haunting my subconscious? If I didn't think about it and don't like it, I don't want it there. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Sometimes I have things in my life that I don't necessarily like the emotion, but I did think about it. But if I didn't think about it and I don't like it, I don't want it there. And then after, after I just exhale, I choose to think about a better emotion, a better way of looking at the situation. This is something that happened with, with us. We were, we were like halfway to our destination and she had forgotten something that she needed. And my very first thought, it was like a half of an instant of a thought was, oh, oh, you know, now you guys have to drive all the way back. Be angry with your wife. <laughs> that was the very first instant. And then I was like, wait, that's stupid. No, instead, I can think, I can think a better thought which is that, oh, well, we just need to go back home and it's, you know, it's going to be, we're going to see fun stuff on the way. There, there's a reason for this. Mm -hmm. And indeed there was, because as we were driving back, like we just got to, 
we got to like singing and and in the car i was just belting out this tune about how we need to have the internet at our house because we literally live in this cottage and the internet is really slow sometimes and by sometimes i mean often <laughs> Often but enough, it's perfect. That, we just spend our time like watching water drip and spiders make their webs. It's we, great. We I actually do, and we do love it. Yeah. yeah, it has been such a blessing. But we still had to go to the library to use the internet. <laughs> anyway, as we're just driving back, I'm I'm just like singing this song I'm making up with great passion and gusto about how we need the internet at our house. <laughs> that actually works all the time. Well, we were singing other songs too, and that we was were. really fun. It, we were. It was just a blast, but I chose in that moment to have that experience. And I could have cho chosen a different one and, and created a totally different day. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, but you have, I mean, I think that a relationship is super possible like this where we can have a lot of these moments of joy and mm -hmm. fun because we both are consciously like working on our brains and, and choosing for ourselves to have these moments of love. Mm -hmm. Like because we both are engaged in this process individually, yeah. doing it together is like, like right. I'm just so much fun. It is, it's so much fun because- We get to co-create all these really cool things together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and whenever she's feeling a little bit off, like I know exactly how to get her back. Mm -hmm. And whenever I'm feeling a little bit off, like it's tickle fight time. Yeah. <laughs> and she's really good at it. And, and the very first thing, it, we'll, we'll both tell you, the very first thing that happens when either one of us is shifting the other one's state is that they get pissed off. Because mm -hmm. the truth will set you free. But first it shall piss you off. Right. So if you're getting pissed off, realize that you're one step away from the truth. <laughs> <laughs> you're just one step away. Just stop being mad about whatever it was that made you mad, and you'll realize it's actually true. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> I love having these conversations. I really do. Me too. I think that they're, they're so very valuable to us. And in our relationship. Yeah. I mean, like, our relationship grows just as much as, as, as we help other people. Mm-hmm. Yes. And our... Speaking of which, uh, Paul and I want to offer to you, if you're feeling led by, you've been watching these videos and you've been like really thinking about reaching out to us because we have this feeling that we have somebody out there who is a couple and they are looking for us and for us to help them to move through their relationship and really grow as a couple and really grow in their power as a couple. Mm -hmm. And just in the same way that Paul and I have done and been able to experience these higher level states of emotional and connection and intimacy with each other, like we know that that is something that a lot of people are looking for. And, and I feel like there is somebody who is wanting this and I just want to call that mm -hmm. person out and invite you to send us a private message because I would love to talk to you about this stuff. I would love to share what we know with you and, you know, I would love to mentor you. So just reach out to us mm -hmm. and we will have a conversation about that because seriously, this has been like the coolest thing in my life to be able to get to these places with deep within myself of deep receiving of his love and deep receiving of my connection with God and being able to like create and like pull from my imagination and create into the world just so I can have these really satisfying, rewarding experiences. And I'd love to teach you how to do that and share and coach you through that. So um, do you have anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, I've been feeling the same thing just very, very strongly. And uh... You know, like this is this is a prime example of us following our intuition. Like something is telling us to put this out there on the internet. So here it is. And then also of letting it go. Mm -hmm. Like we were told to put it out on the internet. We weren't told to obsess about it afterwards. And so we're not going to. No. So anyway, I'm just saying we practice what we preach. We know what we're talking about. And if you have tried a whole bunch of other stuff with your relationship and it hasn't really worked for you at all. And you're I, ready to like really be more fully revealed to your partner and you're mm -hmm. really ready to um, step into your transparency with the person and mm -hmm. let down a lot of the masks and really just be who you are in your partnership. 
and have each other fully see each other. I mean, I, I think that that is the beauty of what we have is that we fully see each other. Yeah. And there's no hiding and we don't no. hide anything. No, we don't. We have no secrets. Yeah, we're just, we have chosen the path of radical self-acceptance and radical love for mm -hmm. ourselves. And with each other, that is applied. So we have a radical love of the other person as well. So yeah, that's a really cool thing. It's a really cool thing. It's a and really you know, cool thing to experience. When you, ex first of all, when you radically love yourself, nose edge. And then it, it, it starts to translate to your partner. Like I started to be able to radically love you. All of a sudden it became very, very easy to radically love all the people around me. Finally extending all the way out to anybody who uses the internet and finds us. We make all of our videos with a, with a foundation uh, of complete love and acceptance for every other human being. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's an interesting place to be because I never, like, I, I always heard people say things like that and I thought it was a bit trite. How can you love everybody? Yeah. I always thought it was a bit trite. But when you love God, it, it ripples. Well, right. You, like, yeah, exactly. Like you love God, which leads to you loving you, which leads you to loving your wife, which leads you to loving your family, which leads you to loving the person who just cut you off in traffic, which leads you to loving every single human being on the planet, which is a fascinating feeling for me because I didn't think such a thing was possible. And it really all started out with, with me loving and accepting me. And then, you know, in the tone of what this video is based under, you know, money, power, sex, um, all of this acceptance leads to this ability to have these things added to you. You know, it's not the destination. It's not the, it is, you know, to some people, this idea of a destination of getting to the money and the power and the sex and all, oh, yeah, that's great. But mm -hmm. it's, you know, the it's the thing, journey it's itself. It's the journey. The thing is, is that God is what makes any of that stuff amazing. Right. You, know? you can have it all and, it, and have with, it suck. With, yeah. And have it to not be like the deeply satisfying thing mm -hmm. that it is for us because we have been learning to enjoy these things and, and to savor them because they, they feel divine and heavenly and, and beautiful and infused with God's love. So when you can have that sanctity and that sacredness around money, power, and sex, mm -hmm. uh, the world is like, <laughs> <sighs> yeah. it's limitless because then you have the spiritual underpinnings, which make it, um, I feel like it really takes away, it takes away the, um, the lash back, I think most spiritual people would think about having money, power, or sex. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you can have God as your backbone and your source and, and your spiritual connection to yourself, mm -hmm. you won't lose yourself in the midst, in the midst of, of having that. money, power, and sex. Right. Everybody who is spiritual who I've ever heard of has said the love of money is the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. Well, it is. The love of money is indeed the root of all evil. But I'm telling you that when you have the spiritual foundation, no matter how much money you have, loving it's a moot point because you've already found your love. You can't love two things. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. No. But if you have that love firmly rooted in your heart mm -hmm. and you're looking to expand into your sexuality, your power, and your money, I'm... That is, those are the people who we're inviting to be a part of our exclusive club of our Money Power Sex group and our uh, mentoring. You know, we want to talk to you because we know that you get it, but we think that we could help you reach those higher more, levels, those higher levels of having, you know, the more fully expressed sex, the more, um, the more empowered stance in the world and being able to generate more money for yourselves because when you're connected to this place, yeah. uh, you can create just instantly. It's, it's amazing. It really is. Like we practice, it's a skill that we practice. Yeah. And not because we care about the stuff, but because the creation, it's fun. The, the act of creation itself is very entertaining. Yes. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. It's 
really incredible. So this video has been like a whole TV episode. <laughs> it has. Paul and Katarina Roy episode. So please, um, we have a new Facebook page. And if you would like this Facebook page, um, I think we're sharing this onto our personal pages. We are. So yes, like this Facebook page. Like the Facebook page. And then uh, you will continue to get the updates from the page itself. Yep. Yeah. If you like it, you'll get 10% of them. And if you subscribe to it, you'll get 100% of them. Yeah. The choice is clear. Totally. So, yeah. Yeah, Facebook page, YouTube channel. Did I mention we have a YouTube channel now? It's the Money Power Sex channel because we just keep it pretty simple all the way across yeah. all the platforms. There you go. And... Um, sending us a private message if you are interested in the group or mentorship. If you are the person that we are speaking to, yep, you'll know it. You will know it, and you will feel this flood in your body and be like, oh, "I need to, I need to message them." Right. We you encourage know, we you. We encourage you, that person, do yep. it because we want to talk to you. We really want to rock your world. Yeah, we can't wait to meet you. Like we, we already think that you're really, really awesome. Yeah, we feel you in our energy. We field. feel you. We're like, we know we're you're like, there. We know you're around. Just like we, just like we knew that we were going to Maui before we really knew it. Yeah, and just like we knew we were going to marry each other before we were Yeah, we, we knew we were going to marriage it. Like, this is the yeah. same exact feeling. Yeah, so we're like, all right, well, like, let's right, get on. Where are you? But, yeah, we are meant to rock somebody's world and make their life a much better place. So, where are you? Okay. All right, we'll catch so you guys. We'll talk to you later, and we'll be back into making our videos now that we're in our, in our flow again. Yeah. And tomorrow, video from us touring a castle. So, yeah, talk to you later. Bye, guys. Have a good night.